Hey guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guide. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, as you know, it's coming up to Christmas now and every year I put out uh, a few different lists just to help you get an idea uh, um, for some art supplies for some loved ones in your life that might be an artist uh, or something that you might want and you need to gently nudge somebody in the right direction. Um, today's list, this list is the gadget list. Now this is basically really affordable little items, probably perfect little stock and fillers for somebody, um, but they're excellent little tools that help just try to make life that little bit easier for whoever's going to be using them. Uh, like I say, they're very inexpensive, but they're very, very practical and uh, very useful little tools. So I hope you enjoy this list and uh, thank you for watching the videos as well. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to say here as well, I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas, even though we're just coming up to the end of November by the time this video will go out. And I will see you all before Christmas, but it is a Christmas list. So I just want to make sure that I say happy Christmas to you all uh, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye. So the first thing that uh, I'm going to talk about is the Karen Dice Acrowell palette. Now I talk about this every single time I do a review on any water soluble product, uh, water pencils, watercolor pencils, water soluble crayons, or and even uh, water soluble markers like the Winsor and Newton markers or the uh, Spectrum Noir Aqua markers. Basically, what this thing is, it's a sheet of Perspex plastic. Um, one side is rough, the other side is smooth. The rough side, you take your water soluble pencil, you rub it across and the, the rough texture just takes off some of that pigment. Uh, you can add as many pencils as you want on there and mix all the colors. The good, really good thing about that is, I know a lot of people can do that on paper, but the thing is on paper, when it dries, it dries, you can't lift it off anymore. But on a plastic, you can, you can just reactivate it and you're good to go. So you don't waste any of that gorgeous pigment. Uh, on the other side, it's smooth, and that's for your markers, things like that, or pens, water-soluble pens, uh, if you've got any. You can rub them on there, again, multiple different colours, and then blend them all in, mix them all in, lift it off, and put it onto your work. I find this an absolute must-have for those of you that love using, like the Karen Dash Neo Colour 2 crayons, or the, the Lyra crayons that are water-soluble, any watercolour pencils, I think... This, this little tool in itself completely transforms any water soluble products that you have. It just gives them another dimension and I love this. This is why it's right at the very top of this list. Um, also as well, all the prices and links and all the rest of it will be over on the Art Gear Guide written review of these. I never put prices up on the videos just because the prices change so often. And every Sunday I go through my reviews and try to make sure that I'm making, giving you the, the cheapest um, links that I can find uh, for the products. Next one is uh, the, the craft knife with the retractable ceramic blade. Now, colour pencil artists uh, have used like a craft knife whenever they're trying to uh, get very, very small hair detail. If they're doing pet portraits or wildlife portraits or portraiture and any kind, they, they use like an exacto blade and it'll, uh, once you've got a lot of layers down, you can pull out really, really fine lines just by scraping the pigment off. Sometimes the X-Acto knife can be a little bit too uh, too sharp and it can cut up your paper if you're not careful. But these craft knives with the ceramic blades, they're best, they're actually, I think they're actually designed for this type of thing and they do an, a remarkable job without destroying the paper. So it, they're really, really good. Uh, a lot of people use them and... Um, I've got that on this list as well. Be a lovely little stock and filler for somebody. Pencil extenders. Uh, the price that we pay now for pencils is going up and up and up. And I don't know whether that's because of COVID or whether it's just because the uh, increase in people buying uh, colored pencils has you know, increased exponentially. I don't know what the reason is, but... 
manufacturers are hiking up the prices of their pencils. So what you want to do is, as an artist, you want to squeeze out as much pigment as you can get from your pencils. Um, and a pencil extender will help you do that. It's a very, very simple idea. It just means that once you've run out of, once you're getting really small down on your pencil from sharpening it, um, it's really difficult to use. You, you don't have the control over that pencil that you have when it's it's full length. Uh, and all the pencil extender does is you just put it onto the end and it, it basically just gives you the pencil back uh, so that you've got full control over it and you can use it down to practically nothing. So really, really simple idea, really inexpensive, lots of different types about there, but I've got a, a little list here of um, some really nice pencil extenders. The next one that I have here is the electric eraser. Now, again, when it comes to colour pencil artists, um, we use a lot of different tools to try and create highlights. For pen colour pencil artists, getting those really nice highlights uh, is really difficult because of the, the, the medium that we use. But with the likes of the Exacto blade that uh, I've got in this list and the uh, electric eraser or the battery operated eraser, it helps us create those little highlight areas that we need. It's not for erasing mistakes or anything like that. This is more like a another pen or pencil because it helps you uh, and it's in that kind of format as well. So you, it's very comfortable to use. It just pulls out some highlight areas that you might need, whether it's on an eye or something like that, where it's really, really small detail. You just need something very, very small. If you're doing uh, human skin, sometimes uh, the skin can be quite porous and uh, a battery eraser can help you get those tiny, tiny little details. Um, whereas if you're trying to use like a pencil eraser, which are excellent in their own right, but for tiny, tiny little details like that, it's really difficult to accomplish with a, just an ordinary pencil eraser or even the, the little Tombow Mono eraser. Like I say, they're fantastic in their own right and a must-have for a lot of people. But the electric or the battery-operated eraser just gives you that little bit more detail uh, and a little bit more control as well. Next one is an eraser guard. Now, I have one of these. I personally haven't used it an awful lot. But I do know a lot of colour pencil artists that do use it. Now, this little thing is just basically a, a sheet of like uh, aluminium. Uh, and it has various different shapes cut out into it. And basically what you do is if you need a, a specific shape on your artwork, uh, your colour pencil work, you lay down the, um, the guard and you select the shape that you want. And then you erase over that. And because it's uh, like a an aluminium material, you can rub quite vigorously over it. Uh, the eraser will go through, because it's very, very thin. The eraser will go through and will pull out that shape for you. Now, I've seen a lot of colour pencil artists use this for like um, when they're trying to pull out highlights on eyes. Like if, you, if you've got a big piece and you just need that kind of like uh, teardrop um, highlight in an eye the eraser guard's good for that there's uh, some very very straight lines and curved lines on it like I say I personally don't use mine an awful lot but I do know some colour pencil artists that swear by these love them very inexpensive but a very very useful little tool for some people okay the art embossing tools this is another very simple idea there's lots of different ways you can you can create this effect, but these little art embossing tools are excellent uh, and they help prevent damage in the paper. So basically what they are is, again, coming back to things like uh, if you're doing a pet portraiture of a cat, say, um, you want to have those whiskers that are coming out really, really crisp white if that's what they are on the cat and one way to do that a lot of color pencil artists in the past have kind of had to try to draw negatively around what would be a whisker and that's really difficult because these whiskers are sometimes you know needle thin um what the 
art and Boston tool does is you gently draw on the paper before you start putting down any pigment. So you've got to have good light on your paper, put your paper down and draw in where the whiskers are with one of these embossing tools. Now they come with different, they have little ball, metal balls on the end of them, various different sizes to give you various different line widths whenever you're doing your work. And all you do is gently uh, push down on it, just like you would do with a pencil or, or, or a pen and it'll create a small indentation on the paper. And so therefore, just like when you were a kid and you were doing leaf rubbings and things like that, when you rub over that with your colour pencils, because it's an indentation, that line will be there and it'll be crisp. Now, they're very, very common. A lot of people use them. Uh, a lot of people swear by them. I do when I'm doing things like this. I always use these little art and Boston tools. So I think they're a great thing to have for any color pencil artist. Okay guys, so next up is the Derwent Scale Divider. Now, um, <clears throat> basically this tool is, a lot of people say in, in art that tracing isn't really allowed. Tracing's cheating. I personally don't subscribe to that. I think if you are learning to draw and you want to trace, just to get the things down, um, sometimes tracing can help you. Uh, get your dimensions right, that type of thing. Uh, so a lot of people use light pads uh, and it's a similar type of process. I think learning how to, starting off, when you're starting off and you want to trace something out, I think it's a really good way to help you understand what what you're, the subject that you're drawing. And then what you can do is from there, you can go on to drawing your own sketches on like rough paper and then tracing it out and then transferring it on to proper paper like artist quality paper another way of doing it is uh, a grid method now the grid method uh, a lot of people use it i've tried it a few times i personally don't like it myself uh, it's um it becomes for me personally it just becomes too messy too complicated and too crowded the page is too crowded uh, having all those lines on it and stuff like that so this this tool is a scale divider. Now it doesn't really help you in terms of drawing your your the subject that you're doing, but if you've got an image and you print it out and you want to make the image much bigger than what you have printed out, the scale divider helps you do that. So if you are drawn, say like an eye, and you need the dimensions of the, the portrait to be perfect, you use this scale divider to measure the the image on measure the eye on the image that you're looking from and then if you want it two times bigger three times bigger on the paper that you're actually going to draw on then you use a scale divider to kind of like plot out the size that that eye needs to be in proportion to the nose and the other eye things like that it's a really handy tool i think it's a, a good tool to have if you're if you're quite new to art and um want to progress on from trace and that type of thing it can help out that way next up is a draft and brush this is the faber castell draft and brush and i couldn't be without this tool now when you when you move on to doing art and you are using expensive paper so you're using like a hot press watercolor paper you're using 100 percent cotton paper these papers are expensive and it's not like using cartridge paper where you can just roll it up and chuck it in the bin. You get like 500 sheets for a couple of pounds. It's not like that. The paper is special. It's produced in a special way. And when you put your fingers on it and your hands on it, it absorbs in the oils that are naturally on your hands. And what happens is when you're using either watercolor, color pencil, markers, whatever it is, you, the, the, the medium that you're using, Wherever you've pressed your hands on or rubbed your hands across and those oils are there, sometimes, more often than not, they that that area will show up, whether it's the, the watercolour won't take on it or it just is slightly lighter than the rest of the area. Coloured pencils, the same. So, the best thing to do is not touch your paper at all and whenever you are erasing lines off, say you're doing... Um, you've drawn out your sketch 
and you don't want to have those lines actually on the final drawing. So as you're going along, when I'm doing it, when I, I rub off certain areas as I'm like filling in the color, um, and the drafting brush just gets rid of all of the, the crumbs and stuff like that. It's a really, really must have tool to have when you're doing your drawings. And it's not just for like, you know, uh, eraser crumbs. It's any, anything at all. If you've left your paper out overnight or maybe then a couple of days and you come back to it and there's dust on it, use the, the, the drafting brush to get rid of any anything at all that's on your paper. You just don't want your hands. So I think a drafting brush is really essential. Okay, the next thing is the A3 light pad. Now, again, back to tracing. I think this tool really does help young artists, new artists, uh, get the feel of drawing things out. I think A3 rather than A4 because A3, uh, it's better at being too big than too small. So if you get an A4 one, um, that's great, but it just it limits you to A4 drawing. Um, and I know in America you don't have these A4, A3 sizes. That it's slightly different over there. But uh, over on the written review, I've got the kind of like conversions, what, in, what an A4 and an A3 are in American terms. But you can even go up to A2 light pads. So they're really quite big. But they just mean, it just means if you go for the A3 pad, light pad, it means then that you can your drawings can be much bigger uh, on an A3 pad if you want to. Next up is this uh, pencil grinder. Now, i done a review of this not that long ago. It's, it's a tool that I use quite often, especially when I'm doing using pastel pencils. I don't use it so much with colored pencils, but certainly with pastel pencils, I couldn't be without this little thing. Uh, it just basically is a little grinder uh, with a steel plate on it or aluminium plate on it. And you sharpen your pencil on it but what it does is it catches all the pastel dust in the bottom and so you can use that pastel dust and if you're using say like Caran Dash um, pastel pencils or um, in fact actually pretty much any pastel pencil nowadays is quite expensive uh, the Faber-Castell pastel pencils are quite expensive the Derm ones um, you want to use as much every pigment that you every little crumb of pigment that you can get your hands on because it's so expensive uh, and this little tool helps you do that and that's really about it guys that's it for my little gadget list um, these are things that I think would be excellent as stocking fillers you know not me in presence or anything like that but if you've got an artist in your life uh, with like I say whether it's your grandchildren your kids uh, just someone that you love your mother, your father, whoever it is, if they don't have any of these items on there and you get some of these little things, knicky knack things for them, uh, I can guarantee you they will be over the moon with these. These items just help make life that little bit more easier uh, in your day-to-day -day art and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Art's supposed to be fun. Art is supposed to be um, therapeutic and I know it can be frustrating at times, but overall, in, ge in general, it's supposed to be fun and there's no need to make art complicated or stressful or anything like that. People turn to art to come away from stress and so little things like this, they just help. They're just tiny little things that help you do whatever it is you're trying to do. Anyway, guys, thank you so much and um, I look forward to seeing you again. Don't forget... You can, uh, if you want to take a look at my other two lists, the affordable list and the um, luxury list, the, the other two Christmas lists, I'll have those linked down below in this video, so you can go across and see those. And um, if you ha if you if you don't already know, I'm doing a giveaway at the minute, which uh, I'll have a link for down below on the the video. You can go across. So if you're watching this video before the 15th of December or the 5th of January, then go across, uh, take a look at the giveaway, the, the details on it, and uh, put your name down. Anyway, guys, thanks very much. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.